Uh, all right, so let's dive into the toolkit itself and do a quick overview. Uh, so bigger studios, they will have you know their own pipelines and uh, connection to F-Track and ShotGrid and stuff like that. Um, but we we wanted to make this you know for the for the the average man, and so um, we wanted to be sort of self-contained but still retain some of those uh, functionalities. Uh, and ultimately, it's it's a tech demo and, and to serve as inspiration on what can be done, and uh, hopefully something that you know is useful as well. And uh, if you do want to customize it to fit your studio needs and connect it to to other things, uh, I'm happy to help out with that as well. So the solution is four nodes, and I know <laughs> there's five nodes on the screen right now, um, but basically the everything starts with the base node, and uh, the base node is the brains of the operations. It, it basically handles everything. The context node is sort of as a filter. This is where you select what you want to work on. And you can create many of these context nodes and connect them to the context switch. And uh, that basically acts as an on-off switch of whatever you're doing. Uh, the output node is meant to be uh, reusable for all of these uh, contexts. Uh, so you set them up and they can be reused and shared. And they can be use the exports or renders. And then you have the submit node, which is uh, basically a, a collection of whatever combinations of outputs and contexts you want to uh, do and it's meant to be as simple and, and clean as, as possible and to be a singular output uh, in order to uh, have something to uh, test with and make some demo files i went into the swedish archipelago and i filmed some stuff and i was just using my iphone 12 and uh, some free apps from the app store to scan the environment and, and make a reflection map and stuff like that and um, so let's dive into houdini now all right, so here we have the toolkit uh, set up, and uh, we'll go through how to do this in, in the following videos. Uh, but up top here, we can see the base node. And so the base node, uh, you basically start with setting a project on disk. And this is similar to setting the Houdini project, uh, but uh, this also creates a folder structure for you with everything you need. It also has some uh, base settings for FPS and resolution and that stuff, which will be used if not overridden by anything else. Uh, you also have if there are uh, plates in the shot folder. Um, you can actually take that uh, plate range and use it as frame range for the shot. Uh, you also have this option to load the plates into the camera. And um, so you can see it in the viewport here, which is pretty nice. Um, and you also have the option to allow uh, the thumbnail to be used. Uh, so if you don't have plates yet and you want uh, <laughs> some sort of image, uh, you can still do that. Uh, and it's highly useful. Uh, sometimes you only have a screenshot from an edit and not the actual uh, plates, for instance. Um, next, you set your department you want to work with. Uh, modeling and looktive is a little bit different, but the rest is basically the stack that is automatically being loaded. And uh, for most people, you know, you're going to start with layout. Uh, you know, some people will only work in light, for instance. Uh, manifest would be used if you just want to set up things that like maybe you want to set up frame ranges per shot and, and settings and the placeholders and stuff like that, but not do anything else. Then manifest is a good place to do it. Um, you have the option to ignore uh, previous uh, exports from your department. Uh, so, you know, if you export something from layout, you don't want that to be loaded back in again, for instance. You also have uh, the option to ignore later departments. And um, that is pretty useful as well. So let's say you're animating. You don't want to see the, uh, you know, CFX fur uh, simulation on uh, the previous animation when you're animating something new. Um, you can also ignore all loading anything at all if you want to go uh, rogue. <laughs> um, you also have this template, which will build this skeleton here that we see. And uh, you have some template settings for vertical space and uh, how many of these uh, contexts you want it to build. And uh, you also have the option to not you know, add these contexts or cameras at all, uh, except for the first one. Uh, sometimes you, you don't want that. You just want these like placeholder dots up here. Uh, so you can connect things uh, as you want. Uh, you can select a default render delegate. Um, this should work if you have Arnold or, or Redshift or anything installed. It should show up here too. Uh, however, uh, it is made with Karma in mind. So if you're using Karma, you have sort of default uh, samples here and uh, uh, AVs that you can use. All right, next up, we have the context node. So the context node is where you select what you want to work on. And this acts as a filter. So when you select here, you have shots and assets, and you can select you know, two or, or, or uh, you know, a bunch of them <laughs> if you want. Um, you can also create new ones, uh, which we're going to do later. And um, everything you do will affect all those shots that you selected. So if you put down a light here or transform or whatever you want to do, that will affect all these shots. And keep in mind that the, the context node doesn't load anything by itself. 
uh, everything is being loaded by the base node. So these are just uh, on and off switches. Uh, so everything you do between the, the context and the context switch is going to be uh, active or not. Uh, and so you can turn these thumbnails off if you want. Uh, you also have this local preview, which allows you uh, to uh, automatically switch uh, context when you're um, working, as long as you view it between the context node and the switch. And this can be turned off as well if you're uh, annoyed by that. You can also override frame ranges here if you want to. Uh, and so this might be good for the layout artist if you have full CG shots, for instance. You'll also notice that all of these nodes have three buttons up top. And uh, the first one is preview switcher. So for instance, in, in this section here, we have two, two shots. And so when we go there, uh, you'll be able to uh, sort of switch between them to see. And if you're something further down, like here, uh, you will see all shots and even the uh, outputs. And so you can switch uh, with that too. Um, and you will see some information about the shot and the settings that will be applied with these combinations. Uh, you also have this uh, publish history. The publish history uh, is all the publishes that have been uh, done in the project. And uh, all the grayed out ones are stuff that is older than this date down here. Uh, and so you can drag this slider to, uh, um, to sort of granularly uh, um, <laughs> select. Right, and so all of these uh, are uh, are new ones, uh, essentially, and you can drag this slider uh, to sort of see how uh, things have been published. You can, you can also uh, press this one to, um, to see uh, for your specific context that you have selected. You have the option to reject files, and so um, what this does is um, if something is broken, maybe, and you, you don't want it, you can reject it. That will add the reject to the file name, and it will be rejected for everyone. And this is something you would use if something is broken or something like that. You can also choose to ignore. Um, and um, these ignores will uh, be active just for you. So uh, that won't affect anyone else. Uh, when you're sliding this stuff and, and updating like this, um, or if you update all uh, and you apply that and you're not happy with the result, you can always uh, press this uh, revert to previous date and. Uh, and do that. And so this is highly useful if you update and you're like, oh no, the, you know, all of a sudden something is broken or it looks bad. You can just revert. In the context nodes themselves, you can lock this uh, update to that date now. And so if you go ahead and update again, um, it won't affect this context node. And some of you may ask, uh, you know, what, why, why don't you have this granular control uh, for every context node? And uh, it's a good question. And it, the problem is that uh, because you were meant to be, you, you can work on multiples at once, and you can stack these. Um, you know, in fact, you can uh, you can place one down here, you know, and, and sort of stack them that way. And um, and so the best you can do is sort of lock down uh, specific changes, and the the lowest common denominator uh, of them will be applied. Um, if you would have granular control, uh, you would have to basically always split out per shot, which is kind of defeats the purpose of a multi-shot uh, control. Um, so you do have some options. You're able to reject and ignore and lock updates and undo. And uh, you know, hopefully that will suit <laughs> the needs of most. Next up, we have the, the output node. And so this one is set to render. So uh, it will output to your uh, base department, and you can rename it to whatever you want. And um, you can override the department if you want, uh, but it can lead to <laughs> unpredictable results. Um, for renders, I think it's it's fine. Uh, you can override the delicate and, and override most things that you would expect from um, classic mantra, basically. Uh, you can also pick the between the AVs that we created up here in the base node. So in this one, maybe we just want these ones. And you can select overscan, uh, resolution multiplier, and samples. Samples is just uh, applied to karma for now. And you can disable a bunch of other things and add crypto mats and stuff like that. Um, for renders, it makes sense to have it sort of at the end of your uh, tree uh, because it's it's gonna you know, want to try and hide and, and do phantom and stuff that is you know upstream. Um, however, with um, exports, so this is just another output uh, set to use the export. And so here again, we can override uh, the base part department. So if you desperately want to um, you know send that or something to a previous department, uh, you can do that. Uh, we'll get into that later as well. So outputs are a little bit different uh, because essentially they can be placed anywhere. Because they don't rely on what's upstream, um, they can be placed you know, up top or in, within uh, different uh, branches and stuff like that. Sometimes you want to export to different departments as well. And so it has a feature to do that where you uh, 
can add a local layer break, which means that it's going to ignore everything above and just uh, export the changes uh, below it, uh, similar to how the context node works. And uh, then you're able to set these to different uh, stuff. So if you're doing a simulation for the boat, you can export that just to the boat. And uh, you can stack these, and you can uh, have many of these and many context nodes below that. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into that uh, later. A good thing to know also is that uh, for both the context and, and the outputs, uh, you can actually jump uh, inside of them. And there is a workspace uh, for you. Um, so you can do that if you uh, need more space to do things. Or with uh, renders and outputs, it's very useful. Um, for instance, if you want to add a turntable, but you want the turntable only to exist for this render, you can jump in and add it here. And last, we have the um, submit node. By default, the, the submit node will uh, have one uh, context here. So we can uh, you know, make this one uh, like a preview, let's say. And uh, you have this selection. And by default, it will just try to grab everything. But uh, for previews, maybe you, you only want the renders and for all contexts. Uh, and you can create as many of these as you want. Um, and uh, maybe you know this is your uh, uh, FG renders and stuff like that, uh, or exports. And you can set this up as you want. And once you're ready to uh, submit, you can uh, see all of them. Uh, but you can also uh, do it uh, per collection. And um, you will be able to, to see exactly what's going to come out and the settings for it and uh, the versioning control and stuff like that. And you can choose to submit it, submit it in background, or add them as render clones over here, um, sort of as a preview. Um, if you have something um, uh, selected in your uh, preview switcher over here, um, you can also render that specific thing to uh, to emulate. Uh, you can also bake the SyncRef settings uh, if you need to. And so that is the toolkit uh, overview. Uh, but the idea is that it's supposed to be uh, highly modular and uh, and uh, reusable uh, in uh, and, and sort of as bulletproof as it can be. <laughs>